In this tutorial, I will show you how to create high quality pan and zoom slideshows with different times for each clip depending on the amount of zoom or pan that you are using. I will also show you how to apply a basic cross fade. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you've uh, successfully installed Caden Live on your computer and also that you've installed FFmpeg. Um, this is the um, codex system that Caden Live uses now, and I believe quite a lot of other um, video editors use. Plenty of links on the internet to how to install this, um, and in fact, there is a link on the Caden Live page as well. So, all things being equal. Um, let's get started. Uh, first of all, before you do anything, just go into the settings and left click on it. And then left click on uh, configure Caden Live. Got a few options here um, to go through. So in the miscellaneous tab, think about what you're going to do with your slideshow. Um, I'm just going to cover slides in this, it's, it's just the whole point of this video. Now, what I do, um, I've learned over time, rather than import the images in, see where it says image clips, and it'll say five seconds. Five seconds is fine for a stationary clip, but for any kind of zoom, especially if you're going to do some extreme zooms and pans, five seconds ain't no good to anyone. So just have a think what you're going to do. Um, I'm going to set this at 20 seconds and I'll hit return. I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back into it. Configure Caden Live and it's still at 20 seconds. Right, that's fine. Now, the other thing, transitions. Oh, by the way, just 20 seconds. You can change it once you've got your clip in the timeline. You'll see, you'll understand why I've done it at 20 seconds when we go into doing the first uh, uh, pan and zoom on the first image. Transitions as well. This is where you fade in and out. Um, standard setting is one second. I, I would leave it at one second. You can change the time of this um, again in the timeline. So I'll show you how to do this as well. Okay. The other thing, um, Left click on project defaults. So there's a couple of things that are quite important here. Decide what format you're going to use. So you've got options here 4K, onwards and upwards, high definition. Now I've got this set at um, HD 1080p 50 frames a second. This is because this is what my camcorder works at and always pays to um, match it to what you're actually bringing in. Um, but let's say if I left this at 10, 1080p and then when I came to render this, um, what will be a video in 4K, it won't actually render it in 4K. It will try and do it in 4K but at 1080. So just decide what you're going to use. Whatever you're going to use, just left click on it so it's highlighted. Now the next thing. And this is very important. Where it says proxy clips, if you left click on this box here, and you've got a couple of options. Generate for videos bigger than. I would just left click on this if it's you might as well if you're going to do any video editing. And also generate for images larger than. And left click on that box as well. Now what this does when you bring an image or a video into the project bin and she creates a smaller version as in size this you should do any video editor now especially when you're dealing with high definition of 4k you should have this set up if you've got a video editor you can't do this in scrap it 
use something like Caden Live or Blender if you want a free editor because you will not successfully edit, especially on slower computers. What this means is that you can bring in a rack of videos and you can edit them. Um, and what this does is it just sets up the edit um, using a lower definition, but what it doesn't do is when you come to finally edit it, this just relates back to the original um, image or video and renders it in full definition. So if you were trying to work with a shed load of 4K videos, on, especially on a slower um, computer, this would just start jamming up and you'd start getting lag and it'd skip frames, whereas you've got a better chance using proxies. And like I said, it doesn't affect the final um, render, the quality. Okay. Um, that's it really. So you're now set up. Let me just make sure. Yeah, so I've highlighted that. I'm going to press, I'm going to left click on apply and I'm going to left click OK. Now the other thing I've just noticed, these lines here are not big enough. So I'm just going to go back into settings again actually. I should have changed those. And Did I see that time? Yes, left click on timeline, track height. I'm going to make these 30, hit return, and that's should be okay. And the other thing is, you've got an option here with these buttons here. I can make it smaller, sorry, bigger or smaller. So I can just make those bigger. Finally, you probably will have to close this and reopen it for all these settings to apply. So I'm just going to close this down and restart. Okay. I'll make this track bigger. There's a reason for this. Okay. Project bin. Look for the button that says add clip, left click on it and navigate to your folder where your images are or as I prefer to do oh if it'll come up always sticks go away open up a folder or your uh, file browser rather and then navigate to your folder where your images are and I just hold down control now and I'll pick a few pictures. Let's hold down control, left click on that one, that one, that one, and say that one. Reduce it in size and then drag them in to the project bin. And close this down and I'll make it bigger again. OK. As you can see, these have got a letter P in them, which means you've got a proxy. Occasionally it doesn't work for whatever reason. If you get an image or a video that doesn't have a proxy, just right click and then left click in the little box next to proxy clip. And then presto, you've got a proxy. Okay. Let's bring in image in. So first image, whichever one you're gonna use pointer over it, hold down your left mouse button and drag it into the timeline. Now you've got a 20 second long clip of this image. So think about what you're going to do with this image. So I'm going to zoom in I think in this area here. So first of all, left click on the tab that says effect then go away. Next to crop and transform, left click on the little arrow, roll your mouse, and then using your left mouse button, drag position and zoom onto this clip. Okay. Now you've got quite a few little options here. They all got their own purposes and some of them are useful, some of them will get you in a right mess. So I'll just go over some of them as we go through. 
these are quite important up here. So you've got a little arrow to the left, go to previous keyframe. Got this button here. Right now it says delete keyframe. And then go to next keyframe, go into the right. Just left click on the left hand, go to previous keyframe. Just to make sure you're at the beginning. Now you can change the size in this box here or if you place your pointer over the word size and hold down your left mouse button you can zoom in and out. You can also change the size with your pointer over the size sort of button and roll your mouse. Now if you place your pointer in your view, place it over this red square and hold down your left mouse button, you can drag yourself your view back in, sort of line with the rest of it. I'm going to zoom in again. Always worth doing this in stages, otherwise you'll just lose this little beastie. That's fine, but I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to be too fussy. It's a good point, not for this uh, tutorial. Um, this can be a problem. You can lose this, especially if you've really zoomed in. So, let's say if I zoomed into this character here, you'd probably lose it. There is a way around this. If you look for this box here, this says Show Hide Edit Mode, and right click on it then left click in the box next to zoom drag this down and I know in this instance it doesn't apply but if this has disappeared off somewhere you can still I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll show you what I mean let's take him right out so there you go we've lost him he's not actually in this view here so so I can still see him and I can still zoom in on these two here. Um, I'm going to drag this up so it's viewing again. I'm going to and then I'm going to show hide edit mode. I'm going to left click on that. And I'm going to right click on it actually and left click on zoom. And then left click on it and this gives you this view. Okay. Now obviously I've zoomed in a bit too much here so I'm going to reduce it in size and again carefully make sure I don't lose this red beastie. That'll do. Okay. Now this is where the reason why I use longer um, clips rather than the five seconds comes in. Um, if you place your pointer over this arrow here, it'll be under this P. And when it flashes off, hold down your left mouse button and drag it along. Look at this timer here. As I said drag this along and decide how long you want this clip to last now I know it's going to have to be at least 8 seconds long roughly don't have to be 100% accurate, that's 8.06 if I use these buttons here I can take it down to 8 seconds ok when you've got your new position look for the white cross it says add keyframe and left click on it. So let's say we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to actually start moving by putting my pointer over the size button and moving this. Again, 
going over this word size left mouse button and gradually bring this out trying to lose this guy's leg here and a bit <laughs> a bit fussy really oh, that'll do okay look for the button it says go to previous keyframe and left click on it now you can press play here or you can use your uh, space bar to um, play and stop your video so I'm just going to just hit my space bar and watch your video yeah, so I think that's too fast so I'm going to hit space again or like I said you can left click on this button now use your back keyframe button go to pre sorry, previous keyframe And then think what you want to do. So let's say, for instance, I'll, I'll take this up to 12 seconds. So with my pointer over this little arrow, hold down your mouse button and just drag it over, say 12. Well, that's what I'm doing on this clip anyway. You can see this here. If you're going to be fussy and really want it to be 12, you can just use these arrows to bring it down. Now you've got this set in here is actually at this keyframe here. So anything after it won't change. So if you go here where it says making sure your mark is at 12 seconds where it says add keyframe left click. And you should have this red arrow. Now go to on this button to previous keyframe here and where you got keyframe right now is a red circle with a diagonal red cross in it left click delete keyframe and go back and again left click on this or hit shift and press play and that looks a lot better okay Go to this keyframe by either using this button or this button. And now your marker is here. And make sure this select button is selected with your pointer over the edge. So you get this sort of funny blue circle with a couple of arrows. Hold down your left mouse button and just drag this in until it snaps onto where your position is. just to make sure everything's okay yep fine and that's it and that's the reason why I made the clip a lot longer it's easier than extending it out because I think when you make a clip longer the proxy doesn't you've only got five seconds of proxy the rest of it is trying to render ordinary images at least that's the way I view it and it seems to work for me okay fade transitions Make sure this is selected, then right click on your clip. Next to add transition, left click on dissolve. Now you've got this dissolving transition, and we know it's one second. If you want to increase the um, time on that, your left mouse button just double click. And there you can change the time. I'm not going to bother, but if you want to make it two seconds, just highlight the one and type in two. But I'm going to leave it at one. But that's how you change your duration on your transitions. Left click OK. The reason I put this transition in because it makes it easier to snap my next clip in at the beginning. So I drag it along using my left mouse button. 
it'll snap to this transition. I'm going to just drag this along and make sure that I've actually got transition set up correctly. There you go, job done. Again, left click on effects, then using your left mouse button, drag position and zoom over your next clip. And again, using this previous keyframe, go back. And this is where the next problem comes from, or comes into things. If you've never used an editor before, how do you see the beginning of your clip? So one of the reasons why I made these lines bigger, if you remember, we typed it into uh, 30 wide, is you can actually see these here. You've got a little thing, which is called, it's not going to light up, yes it is, disable video. Left click on it. That means now you can't see this video. Make sure you turn it on before you render though because you'll end up with video gap video gap okay here we go again now this time I want to zoom from left to right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to using this size button again I'm going to zoom right in so I don't know that's all we'll do there and I can still see me red button so I'm not going to muck around too much and we'll go over there that's fine and again let's decide on a time for this one try 10 seconds now let's try 12 we'll slide this over until that says 12 there and again if you're going to be fussy use the arrows and that says 12. Fine. Use this arrow here to go to next keyframe. No, nope, that's wrong. Sorry. See, I've even made a mistake. I'll take this back to 12. And I'm going to use this button here to add a keyframe. Now with this keyframe selected, I want to move to the right. Now this is where some of these buttons can be handy rather than scrolling over. There's a few buttons, center horizontally, left align. They don't work perfectly, but they can help you out. So this one here, align to right. I'm going to left click on it and it's moved the whole thing over without all the effort. I want to zoom in on this a bit more though so I'm going to increase this in size. And now our friends here have disappeared and so is this marker. Um, now you like I've said before, you can change things around by placing your pointer over the Y or the X. So I'm going to bring it up and move it over like this. In fact, I'll keep doing this. Rather than changing this setting here, it's not too bad. So we'll bring this over. back to the beginning left click here or hit shift just to play your clip and if you're happy leave it at that I'm gonna hit shift again to stop this if you want to make it longer 
drag this over I don't know take it over 20 nearly now to add a keyframe if you want and delete this one oh, I'm not gonna change around um, otherwise this would just go on so I'm gonna go back to this by using this uh, left hand go to previous keyframe button once I'm set up there again I'll just snap this back okay now one more thing first of all let's turn that on let's bring another clip in won't go into much more now you can see how you can pan and zoom using different videos bring a clip in don't slam it over just leave it like that and with your pointer now because you're going to be panning from this one to this one with your pointer to the left of the clip hold down your right mouse button then next to add transition left click on dissolve grab the dissolve and actually slap it there and then when you so that it's in line with the end of this clip it'll snap onto the end of it now when you bring this back the whole thing will snap together and you won't end up with any overlays or mismatches make sure it's working that's fine go into effects position and zoom drag this down okay now this again this some of these buttons are handy they won't do much if you don't if you leave it as it's first imported but let's just if I increase this in size a bit this one here it's increased downwards so and then you've got a few buttons here one says adjust and center in frame fit to width and fit to height I'm gonna left click fit to width that will in this instance bring this clip full size to width and actually centered at the top you know that because you've got these little red squares in each corner now again we got the same problem we can see our friend here so left click on this button here says enable or disable video and you can see where you're going and all you need to do now is decide on a time again drag this little pointer over 10 seconds 12 seconds whatever using this timer here press this button add keyframe and then decide what you're going to do so I'm just going to use a pan down on this so again with my pointer in Y I'm going to just move this all the way over to there back to the beginning press play or hit shift and see what it looks like But that's not too bad so bring this pointer in line here with the uh, go to next keyframe snap this back as we did before add transition dissolve and onwards and onwards and keep going until you're ready to produce your or render your slideshow obviously I've only got four I'm not going to do any more you can see pretty much what I've done here so finally render look for this button here that says render left click on it and decide what you're going to render in and like I said if you're using HD um, one, um, 1080 stick with that if you want to do ultra high definition uh, 4k you make sure you've set it up for that so 
I'm going to use MP4 dominating format H264. So I'm going to left click on that. Also, I'm going to make this best quality. So I'm going to slide this slider all the way over, which says quality. I also want to give it a title and um, I don't know. Points are where to keep it, so I don't know. I'm going to just bung it on a desktop, I think. So, double click desktop and call it. I've already got a pan and zoom there, so I don't know. P and Z. That'll do. Left click on open. Everything's set up. OK, and left click on render and I'll wait for the whole thing to render. Now, on the, first, on the render I've just done, I've made the classic mistake. Um, so I've come back in here. Make sure, as I didn't when the first render I did, or just done, you can't see this because I forgot to uh, enable the video. So I can just enable that video. And now, Hopefully I can do this again. So as I said before, I'm just going to press left click on render project. Make sure that everything's there. Titles are already, so that's fine. And render the file. Output order exists. Is that okay? Right over it. Yes. And again. I'll wait for this to render. Okay, well hopefully now the video won't have a bit missing in the middle. Um, once this shows up, um, all you can do now is just remove job and then left click on remove job and then left click close. Might pay to go into file and uh, save as, give it a title just in case you're not happy and then you can uh, open recent and go into basically all this and change it around but anyway I'm not going to bother with this I'm just going to close this down and then left click on the video or the slideshow and that's working and hopefully it won't have a bit missing in the middle just let this run make sure everything's okay yeah ah, look at that lovely and that's it That pan and zoom's brilliant. Um, not much else I can say really. You can by putting more of the um, keyframe markers in pan around a um, picture, so you could zoom from him to her to that brush in and out. It's also very good for uh, doing extremely large images. Um, you know, if you've got something like 60 megapixels or more. Um, it's great for working in that though I advise you do really large ones one image at a time and then edit it again um, that's it really hopefully that's helped somebody and just in case some smart Alex says I shouldn't be using these pictures because obviously we have a, a certain Mr. P here um, don't bother because these pictures belong to me they're my pictures I have every right to use them so other than that, hopefully that's helped somebody. Thank you for watching. Cheers.